and the recording is in progress. So everyone can hear me, I hope. We can um, hear you. You can hear me, great. Okay, so, oh, I see somebody who has an oceans of possibilities. Yay! <laughs> yep, got that stuck in there. Got that stuck in there, perfect. So, and that just is a great, um, I guess, lead-in segue introduction to some of the reasons why we're talking about parks today. Um, the reason we thought uh, we would talk about um, parks, parks and partnerships is we would love to hear from you and have you talk to each other and us be able to glean from you some of the great partnerships you are having with your local state parks or your local county parks. Um, and a lot of it has to do with the summer reading. I mean, it, not entirely because it could be much wider branching, but we're trying to get some great ideas for, for summer reading and how people can um, work with local parks that have lakes or streams or oceans or puddles to, to get great programming ideas going for the Oceans of Possibility Summer Reading that's coming up. So I don't see too many folks who are not from the Division of Library and Information Services. So um, if you haven't been partnering with uh, your local park service, let's talk about things that you would like to do to partner with your local park service. And anybody who wants to jump in, please go right ahead, Judy. <laughs> um. Well, we haven't been um, partnering with our local park service. Um, however, the town's marina mm -hmm. we're partnering with, and they are going to come down and do some um, programs here at the library um, on boating and on the marina. We've also got the Coast Guard coming in. Um, the Coast Guard Auxiliary, yes, they will come in and they will do programs for you. Oh, um, fun. And then we've got the fire department who has an, a drowning prevention program. They're going mm -hmm. to come in. Um, I'm trying to think of who else that they, cause I just signed the forms. <laughs> I'm not the one who goes out and gets the programs anymore. Um, and I know they've got somebody coming in for scuba, but I think they're a business. And uh, we have loggerhead that we're going to, that's going to come in, loggerhead uh, uh, turtle sanctuary. Okay, okay, good, um, yay. And I think they were gonna try and get the manatees from the FPL, mm -hmm. get a manatee uh, program over there. Oh, that's, that's, that's it, all we've been partnering with, but. That seems like a lot. And they yeah. all seem really good. Yeah, yeah. So are you, are they close by? Is that, is that? Yeah, they're, yeah. Loggerhead is, we're in Lake Park, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. which is central uh, Palm Beach County. And Loggerhead's in Jupiter and the Manatee place is in West Palm Beach. West Palm Beach. So we're talking not too many miles. It's funny, I know, um, I'm just remembering a certain Coast Guard location that was someplace very strange, like, where was it? Swanee? I think it was up in the, in, in the, the not, a, not Swanee County, but up the Suwannee River. And, and I can't, I still haven't quite figured out how the Coast Guard got situated up the river, uh, in, up the Suwannee River. But that was, it's very, very old. That's very, very old. Coast Guard station. Must have been able to get bigger boats in there. Boat, boats in, yeah. Yeah, it's down, I think it's in the, the Swanee River Water Management District, and I happened to be sort of doing a tourist thing and came across it a couple years back, which I thought, how did that get here? Well, those all sound absolutely amazing. Um, I am going to put in a little bit of a plug. We've got a water safety ebook on the Florida Electronic Library that's called Help I Can't Swim. That um, it's there for anybody to use, 
as many people who need it can be downloaded all of their things. So it's a, a great little, it's for middle school, mostly for middle school kids. And it's just a water safety. We were doing a, a partnership a few years back with a water safety um, group doing some tra online training and that sort of thing. And I bought the book as part of that program and it's still there. So wanted to use that resource as part of your safety. So, um, so Clarissa or Lisa, do either of you want to jump in and, and talk about either partnerships you're doing or partnerships you'd like to do? Hi, everybody. I'm Lisa Hathaway with the Mandel Public Library. Um, I'm happy to hear what Judy's doing. Um, she's our neighbor. Uh, we, we are partnering with Loggerhead, but I like the idea of reaching out to some of our local marinas. I think that's a fabulous idea. We have the Rybovich Marina here that's very popular. Um, I like the idea of the you know, swim safety and just anything to tie it into the oceans, definitely. Um, some great ideas. I'm just here to, to listen and absorb. Thank you. Okay. Okay, and I see some chats, Clarissa. I'm not sure if you don't have a microphone, but I'm seeing Clarissa saying, I've been trying to get embedded with the local city park and their summer camps. And so far I'm waiting to hear back about the schedule. I would have to work around field trips and pool trips, but the park manager has assured me we will get an hour a week at least. Oh, that sounds good. So Clarissa, if, do you have a microphone that you could turn on or do you want to talk more about this and the sorts of things that you might be able to do? Hi. Hey. Yes, so um, I am at Miami Dade Public Library and I am in one of the Coconut Grove branches and so <laughs> we are actually next door to a park. We're hoping to get in with their summer camp. Um, and we're really close to a marina too, so that is a great idea. <laughs> we, um, we here we're going to do a summer um, series every Friday, and so I've been trying to work and, and get folks to come in um, every Friday at least an hour, an hour and a half, and then the summer camp would be extra. And so we've reached out to other people. We've done things with um, University of Miami before and FIU, but um, but yeah, now I'm really pushing with the parks. <laughs> yeah, and local parks, um, there are they, I guess every county has things set up just a little bit differently, but are, are the local parks part of your county government? So I am in a city, actually. In a city, okay. Yeah. So as county, I would have to go to the city to, to have them. Yeah, so it's a little different. If different. it were county, I feel like it might be easier. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I am always amazed at Florida's parks. It doesn't matter if they're city, county, local, even even um, state and national. Every place I go, there's just amazing, amazing places to visit and see. Um, we're very lucky, I think. Definitely. So, let's see, what do I see here? Water safety for kids, contact your local DCF representative, schedule a free water safety program at your library. And DCF is the water safety group that we were working with a few years back to do the summer safety tips. Then we bought the, the Help I Can't Swim book to, to help complement that. Um, and yeah, they've got some great trainers um, there too for water safety. I, I learned some things, which I had to know, so working with your, your local parks and your local pools, I think on water safety is always a good thing. It, one of the things that I learned is that people from up north never really think about water safety when they come to Florida. They aren't used to as many lakes and things as we have. Like every, every, every backyard has a sink or a, a a pool or a, a uh, canal, it, it, they're just everywhere. I, I mean, in my backyard, I have a pond and there's two sinks within just like throwing rock distance from my house. So you just never know. There's just huge amounts of these wonderful water places that Northerners don't know about. 
or they don't think about it when they come down to visit, you know, for, yes, canals, exactly, yes. So, but we had, um, I think that I think that is a great thing for folks to um, talk to the local marinas. One of the things that we wanted to talk about a little bit um, on this on this today um, is an exciting partnership that we're working to pull together. Um, before I jump into that, Kat or Amy, do either of you want to have or share anything that you may? Um, because I see Kat is sharing some wonderful things in chat. Um, hi, I just wanted to share really quickly um, the resources that the Florida Bureau of Braille and Talking Books Library has that they compile a list every year to go along with the, um, the theme. So this year will be Oceans of Possibility um, for talking books and uh, resources so that you can be um, really inclusive with your patrons on that. That was all, I was just gonna throw that into, into the chat really quickly. Yeah, so if you have folks who are, are um, visually impaired, they have things that I think you, they can, anyone can borrow those, right, and share. Is that how that works, Kat? Um, for these, it um, for these resources, it requires uh, that the patron be certified as uh, vision, vision or print impaired. But librarians now are among the professionals that are able to certify this, and they have uh, they have more information on their on their website for that. Maureen also sent me the form recently, so if you're interested in finding more about that, just uh, throw me a throw me a note in chat. But uh, oh, go, oh, hey, Amy. Did you have something? Oh, you can finish. Well? You can finish up if you want. No, go ahead. That was it. Oh, I was just going to mention, like Dolly said, um, we are doing a partnership between the parks and us and public libraries, and we'll be having a town hall with further information about those in May that you can look out for. Um, that one's May 16th at 10 a.m. and one's May 17th at three. Um, but we'll send an email out to everyone. Um, so that you can sign up for it and kind of learn a little bit more in depth about it. We're kind of crossing some T's and dying some I's with it right now. Um, but it'll be also shared on our web page right here on our webinars page too. And to give you a, an idea of what we're talking about. Um, so we're working toward creating a partnership with parks so that libraries can have park passes to check out through their circulation. Now, I have to say this out loud. This is supposed to be this blast, huge announcement, excitement from the Secretary of State's office. So we're trying to keep this quiet until the Secretary of State or um, possibly the First Lady, we're not sure who's gonna be doing this wonderful announcement, but um, what, what we're trying to do is, is we're not sending anything out in writing. We're not saying anything um, official because the official first announcement is this wonderful announcement that is through the, the um, Secretary of State's office or the governor's office. Um, so this is all shh, shh, no sharing, all very hush hush. And that's why the, we're having Zoom town hall so that we can um, get to some of the more some of the more details. And I can't share all of the details now because they haven't completely been hammered out. We're, we're working with the parks service right now and through the Secretary of State's office to hammer out all the details. But um, we're planning on sending out two park passes per outlet so that they can be circulated through the circ desk and it's a day pass. It's not for camping or any of those things, but it would give folks a chance just to go to their parks for however many parks they wanna visit for as many days as you wanna check them out for. Um, we are hoping that we can get this into lots of folks' hands. So we were maybe depending on um, your own circulation um, guidelines and policies, um, if, if you've got 
you know, a week as opposed to 21 days or 14 days. We sort of encourage the slightly shorter ones, but it's all, all going to be up to you. Um, and we're going to get you lots more details. Um, that's, and actually, that's great because we have um, these two new kits that we have brought out. We have a fishing kit and yes, a bird, bird watching kit. So this would be a great complement to those kits. Perfect. Exactly. So tell us more about those two things, the two kits. So we have, because of COVID, we created more kits for people while we were closed for about mm -hmm. four months period. And it started off with just, we do a lot of hands-on art classes and we mm -hmm. bought all the supplies before COVID hit and then realized we needed to use up these items. So we've created the kits along with like YouTube videos on how to do the art. We did story mm -hmm. time kits, um, everything like that. And it was very popular. So then we decided we wanted to create um, adventures for people. So we have a fishing kit, we have a bird watching kit. Um, I think we have a general camping kit as well. So just these kits to get mm -hmm. people out of the norm that they're mm -hmm. used to. Um, and it comes with a fishing pole. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We also have a geocaching kit as well, which I think would be really great to, to use up the parks. So I think it's very popular. They do not stay on our well, it's never on our shelf. It's always on hold for the next person. So I think uh, these park, having uh, tickets to the parks would be awesome. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And I think I'm going to look up all of those wonderful kits on your website. Are, is there, are they in your catalog or is there some place yeah, I can read more about I'll, them? I'll put a link in inside yeah. the chat for everybody. Yeah. I'll go along. I mean, we have a program call it, we call LEAP, which is the Library Exploration and Adventure Passport. And it right now we've got, um, we get tickets from the Science Center, um, nice. from Flagler Museum and from the Children's uh, Schoolhouse Museum. Mm -hmm. And we check those out for a week at a time. So we could, we could fit that in really easily with that. Nice, oh, that's fun. Good, 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 good. Um, I see a question in the chat. How many kits are in your system? Great question. <laughs> <laughs> so we have these adventure kits. We have grab and go art kits. We have grab and go seed kits. We added a healing library kit um, as well. So I will get you that information and put it inside the chat so you get an idea. Nice. What's in the healing library kit? So that might be some, some of it's art based as well, but it also might come with some therapy based materials oh, okay. as well. We've been doing a lot of bringing in people to, we, we have um, kind of like open therapy sessions with some um, certified therapists that are here locally and they come in and it's just kind of like a chance to talk about what's happened with COVID and it's very communal. communal. Um, and so that kind of came out of that concept. Uh, we also have been doing a lot of body positivity programs as well. Uh, so with the popularity of all those and the fact that we do all these kits, they thought, well, let's create kits for people to, they can generally check them out or we do have ones where you get to keep everything from the kit as well. I definitely need to check these out. That sounds wonderful. Um, and so I wanted to get back to the museum passes. You had said that you check the museum, the various museum passes out um, for uh, a week. What they, what we actually, technically we we check them out. Realistically, we don't really. Um, they gave us tickets and they like the science center gives us 16 tickets and we put two of them at a time in our little card box they check out the card box so that we get the the circ but then they have to take the tickets and they give the tickets they turn the tickets in oh i so see we don't really get anything back okay so it's not it's not a circulation per se it's uh right I got you. Oh, but still. I think schoolhouse we we did have a circulation going with, but the other ones they were like, no, we want you to turn them in and not 
use them after a certain point, so. Oh, yeah, well, and, and we're, we're sort of gonna face the same thing because um, ours is gonna be basically for the summer reading timeframe. And once the summer reading timeframe is done, I think we're starting May 21st and it's gonna end um, September 11th, which is right after, I think it's World Literacy Day. So we wanted to make sure it went through the literacy day, but um, then but hopefully kids will be back in school, families will be back um, doing things. And of course, weekends are always good park times too. Yeah. But um, one of the things we want to do is, is this is sort of a pilot program, see how it goes, how popular it is, and see if we can either grow it or continue with it in other ways. Yeah, we've been wanting to grow our lead program. Um, I just haven't had the time to do it because I think I'd have to get um, grants and see if we can purchase mm -hmm. like, something along the lines of season passes. Mm -hmm. And I haven't had a chance to go and get grants to do that yet. Mm -hmm. So there's always there's always something. Yeah, um, yeah. It's a very busy. There's always something that keeps you busy. And there's always something that is on that checklist that you haven't quite got to yet. Yeah. Um, so, Clarissa, just wondering, I'm looking to see if there's anything in the list. I did see um, the adventure activity kits that Lisa has placed in the chat. So if you haven't had a chance to click on those, um, I did, but I, I'm trying not to do, get distracted. <laughs> so uh, Lisa, the um, and I, I'm trying not to get distracted, so I'm gonna say this out loud. How are, are they? Are the kids for a month or a, a week or? What's the oh search? Um, these are the brainchild of my wonderful staff. So let me see. I feel like they're probably three weeks, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm looking it up right now. I'm taking a real Lisa, um, yeah. for your kits, how did you get the money for them? Were they a grant or? Yeah, those, these started off with uh, grant funding through the state, actually, through the, the last um, uh, amount of money that came in through COVID funding. And we just- There's your ARPA, yeah. Something we've always just wanted to do. Obviously, we didn't have the money for it. So this was a way to do that. Um, I really don't know how long you can check them out for. It's a good question. <laughs> I will have to, to look at that. I would think that it's got to be the same as our books, three weeks, just because you need time to be able to really use the kit. In, uh, in the stargazing one, it says they can be borrowed up to two weeks. So okay. I don't know if they maybe each of them is different. But yeah, I just I just opened that one right now. OK, thank you. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. It's in the it's in your in your um, circulation. I should not be looking at a website when I'm supposed to be talking to you guys, but boy, that looks like fun. Yeah, <gasps> you've got a ukulele. <laughs> Very popular. I bet. I bet it is. So. I'm just thinking about some of the things that I've heard other folks talk about um, that that they've done partnering with their local parks. Um, and, and none of you have mentioned that you do it, but I'm gonna throw it out there. Um, you know, local, especially the state parks, and I think also some of the other ones have uh, rangers who, who teach. And I know here at the Department of State, we train those rangers, this, at least the state rangers, the, the, the ones that are through the Environmental Protection Agency, the, the state DEP. 
and uh, um, our archaeologists work with them if they've got archaeological sites. They talk about the shipwreck trails. They talk about the um, finding things, metal detectors in state parks. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that, that the Department of State talks and the Division of Historical Resources talks to, to, to uh, parks about. And as, as a result, the, the state parks have kind of a wealth of information that they also can share. And I didn't know if any of you had talked to your local parks and talked to the rangers there to see if you could get them in for some programming ideas. So is that something that they would be interested in doing? Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know yeah. if the, like the way staffing works these days, you know, it's hard to sometimes to get people to come out. Um, yeah, well, that's, that is also true. I will say that is also true. Um, no, but it's a great idea. But yeah, I know. So, um, so we're, we're working and, and we're going to talk more about this later, I think, and, um, probably in the Zoom town halls when we get more information. But some of the things that the people that we're working with over at the Park Service have said that the Rangers um, already are, are doing some partnerships with their local libraries and that, that they're going to, I mean, they're, we're having some training with them about the park pass. And so um, I'm hoping that it, it might give folks uh, an ability to, at libraries to reach out and, and work with rangers at their local parks. Um, unfortunately, not every single state park has rangers at it. There's a, there's a lot where you, you know, pay your three bucks or whatever it is in the little pay station and, and hang the thing from your rear mirror and go in. So there aren't always rangers at the parks, but I know that there are at several of the ones that I go to here in Leon County up north and they have outreach. I'm sure they all of them have some kind of an outreach capability. I was just thinking I was involved in learning from a program. They were teaching teachers how to teach environmentalism and I got on the list, so I got to go. Oh, yay. Um, <laughs> even though I was a public librarian. Um, but we went to John Dean MacArthur State Park, and they have, um, they were doing that kind of stuff. And this was back in 2018. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they probably even have more Zooms going on now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, a, I mean, I was thinking, I live right next to Jonathan Dickinson State Park. Um, so I'd be curious to see. They talk about Trapper Nelson you know, all the really cool things that happen over at that park. Good idea. Yeah, there's a, we've got one that's um, in the, a couple of counties over that I've gotten to a time or two where they, um, they do a lot of outreach at, at the park and they'll have like family fun days and whatnot. And they have all sorts of things that, that they have there. Um, but it's, it's not a park that's always got that open. It's like they have this traveling thing that goes from park to park. And so they may have the capability to just like strap on their backpack or pull their little box of goodies to anywhere they wanna go. Yeah. So, well, um, I will say I, I had been hoping for a few more people. We had 14 folks registered um, for this. So I'd been hoping that there'd be a lot of being able to share. We have done quite a bit of sharing. Um, I see Amy has turned on her camera. <laughs> I just I didn't know if anyone was um, planning on doing any virtual or hybrid programming or anything or just doing things in person but I was thinking about how Leon County during the pandemic they had someone who was very familiar she wasn't a park staff person but she had she was a historian in the area who did a virtual tour of a local park and went through some of the historical meaning of it and 
I feel like that would be a really cool program or having a volunteer or someone who's really familiar with like a short trail, you know, having people meet up on a certain day and time and walk the trail together or, you know, they might not necessarily have someone to go with, but they want to walk with someone. Um, just throwing that out there as a possible, maybe adult program even um, for those who, who might be willing during the daytime to go or morning when it's cooler. I threw some uh, speaker spiros in the chat and was wondering if any of you had any experience with any of these um, speaker spiros and could um, say, you know, whether you've used that and what the experience was like. And I, I know that they say that they have speakers that can um, present either virtually or, or located in a lot of regions around the state. So I was hoping those would be useful. And they did mention that they have, um, particularly I talked to FAU Harbor Branch and that they do have uh, Spanish speakers and French speakers that um, are on the list in the Speakers Bureau. Judy, you'd mentioned manatees earlier. Can you talk more about that? Um, the manatees, let me see if I can pull them up. Um, there is a place not far from us where FPL um, made this thing. Manatees. Let's go with that. Manatee is near me. Ah, the Manatee Lagoon is what it is. And um, it is located right next to the FPL plant. And they have their warm water outtakes right there. So the manatees come when it's really cold to stay there because it's warmer. Um, so they have a little like museum slash observation and, and where you can see information about the manatees there. It's a, a building. And I've talked to them before about um, coming over here and doing a program. And I, I think that one of my, uh, our, our pro person who's programming now is talking to them about that as well. So we're going to try and get them here this summer to get there. Um, it's just called the Manatee Lagoon. And it's located in uh, West Palm Beach. That's great. I hope you get somebody to come over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is the perfect time to do it. We see them every once in a while near where we are, if you're in the right place at the right time. And I just love the way they just come up at the water and, and breathe. They're so calming. Well, they pretty much are guaranteed to be over at the Manatee Lagoon between usually January and February. If it gets really cold in or it starts getting cold in December, they'll start showing up then. But it's warm enough right in that area that a lot of the manatees congregate over there. Yeah, and Clarissa pointed out in the chat, it's been a tough year for manatees. It has, I've been worried about them. Yeah, yeah. we had, um, a challenge in the Wakala Springs River that, that's right down south of here, where somebody, I guess, had dumped a, 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 a marine, like a aquarium or something, and it had an invasive plant that just took over the whole river. Oh. And you couldn't, you couldn't get your boats through. I mean, it just took over. And one day, I think some manatee discovered that they really liked to eat it. And the next thing you know, the manatees had come in and had just polished the place clean. <laughs> there wasn't a scrap of it left. <laughs> so it was nice for two reasons, because you first, they got rid of it. And second, while they were there munching, you got to see lots of manatees. It was fun. So, um, 
one of the things, so on a slightly different conversation, a slightly different type of thing, um, did you know that the Florida Public Archaeology Network does workshops? And of course, that's, they do a lot of stuff about historic buildings and cemeteries and things, but they also have some things for underwater sites and a few other things. And they, they have regional centers around um, Florida. Unfortunately, I just clicked on their, on their map of things and it says it's under maintenance. So now is not the perfect time to go see their stuff, but they do have a few um, training um, archeology span in the classrooms or, or there's something that's, um, Let's see what submerged sites education in stewardship and whatnot. And so it, it could be that if not this instant, there might, but it but at some point soon, um, it's called FPAN. It's the um, Florida Public. Let's see if I can Florida Public Archaeology Network. And on a very different topic that has nothing to do with under water or oceans of possibilities. Another thing that FPAN is doing is um, they're, they're trying to find out more about the historic cemeteries. And I don't know if you've heard about this, but they're, they're doing a, a bit of a, a, a program that's really coming to getting a real good push for May because May is Historic Cemetery Appreciation Month which who knew that? I didn't know that, but I found that out recently that May is Historic Cemetery Appreciation Month. And so what they're trying to do is they're trying to have folks who know about, who do genealogy research or do research, historical research in their local libraries or librarians who know about the local um, history. If, if you have any idea if there is a local cemetery that may not be a known cemetery, like the great big, the big one in center of town, but more like the little one that's outside of town that's got a little tiny fence around it. Nobody really goes there anymore. That sort of cemetery, they really want to hear about it. And, and they've got um, postcards that they'd like to send out to all the libraries in the state so that the libraries can hand them out to folks who are interested in genealogy or interested in sharing anything that they know about their local cemeteries. Um, so if you're interested, um, drop me a line or, or stick something in, in the chat if you've got any interest at all in hearing more about um, historic cemeteries. What's interesting is, is that there's supposedly about 7,000 historical cemeteries in Florida, but FPAN only knows about 1,500 of them. So they need to find quite a few more cemeteries to put, put on their maps so people can do genealogy and find their ancestors or the local um, you know, building zoning people can stick it on their map so they know they can't just go in and start digging. So there's you know, historic things going on with the cemetery. So if you're interested, I know it's, it's not underwater and it's not separate reading, it's just sideways, but. <laughs> So I'm um, trying to think of other resources. Um, we're going to have a whole list of them on our website. We're building a website. So keep your eyes open. Um, we'll let you know more in the Zoom calls if you're interested. Um, does anyone else have ideas or resources or kits or questions that they'd like to share? There we go, Coconut Grove Cemetery. Very nice. Oh, that's wonderful. So um, I will actually. I'm going to throw something in the chat just in case you're interested. Um, just a link to the the website and. Uh, we can get you postcards or we can, um, or you can ask for postcards straight from that 
straight from that site. And it's in, it's part of the, well, it's the, the project is, is in um, collaboration with the Florida Division of Historical Resources, which is one of our sisters in the, the Department of State. They're one of our, our sister agencies inside the Department of State. So we're working with them um, to, to get information out about this. Um, but it's also another reason why I, I know about some of the things that FPAN does because they've got some really great projects and training and resources. And then, so of course, there's the, the Division of Historical Resources. If you don't know, we've got the shipwreck trail and, and, and other information about sunken treasure and all the fun stuff, pirate gold, I think. I mean, all sorts of fun stuff that you can, you can get things from that can explore your oceans of possibilities. I remember as a kid, one of my favorite stories was somebody in Florida who had who had found, honest to goodness, he found, I think, a bunch of pearls that had come out of a shipwreck or something that had washed up on the beach. And they, not, not the oysters, but the pearls. All right, well, I don't want to keep everybody here. Um, Just you don't want to just do the whole hour just for the sake of doing a whole hour. So I'm going to throw it open to see if folks have other ideas or other things to share. And I'm going to include um, Kat, Nancy, Amy, and Emily on, on that if, if you've got things to share as well. Here in deafening silence. Again, keep your eyes open. Um, Amy will be sharing up more information about those town halls, and we'll be sharing a lot more information about the park passes. So keep, keep, uh, I think we're announcing them. It'll at least be on our website and probably sending out emails as well. So, Amy, anything more? about the Zooms? Um, I don't think so. I think we'll probably be sending out the email in the next week or so is the hope. Um, so then, and then you can come, they won't be recorded. So we do highly recommend that you come to one of them, but we'll at least be sending out detailed emails um, and the link to the website um, for more information if you can't make it to either of those. Anything else? Yes, I actually do have something. I, I realized I was staying silent. Um, the funding, or at least the first funding application window that um, they have not announced, there will be a second, so I don't want to know why I said first, uh, for the Emergency Connectivity Fund, which is the, the fund that the FCC is providing for things like tablets, laptops, and hotspots uh, will open, um, let's see, I just want to make sure I get the exact right date, um, it will be at the end of this month and close halfway through May. So I am um, putting together a webinar uh, swiftly to, to predate that opening date by a couple of days, uh, and we'll have the information about that out on um, the listservs and similar on our website soon. Uh, they kind of snuck it in, uh, snuck up on me a little bit this year, so I apologize if this is a, a date that's coming as a surprise to anyone else, because it was to me as well. is all right so i'm just throwing something um one little thing i mentioned introduction to underwater archaeology um i don't know there's gonna be is this is gonna be in branford but anyway i'm just i'm just throwing some of these things in just because it could be of interest to folks, but there's like a whole bunch of of um, events that FPAN does that could be interesting to folks. Anyway, all right. 
um, and we're going to be bo posting more information that the Division of Historical Resources can provide and the parks can provide and that sort of thing. So other, hopefully other opportunities as, as we are able to build on them. All right, so 15 minutes early with that. Um, anything else? Okay, well, I appreciate uh, Judy, Lisa, and Clarissa coming to this and helping out <laughs> our conversation, sharing some really good resources. I'm going to go dive into those kits and I want to look into your museum passes as well. So, really neat stuff. All right. Okay. Well, thanks for joining. Appreciate it.